Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning into my channel. My name is Goliath and I'm the artist, author and creator of the Al Goliath Tarot Deck. Um, in this channel we look at all things tarot, occult, mystical, spiritual and um, we just kind of have a look at the shadow side of things. Bit of a chat, real talk. I've got my coffee here and today we are looking at the Two of Swords. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for coming in and checking out what I do. Um, my deck is a self-published deck, uh, so I have to do my own promo for it. If you'd like to pick up a copy, you can. Um, the links are in the description. <laughs> the links are in the description below. I'm already knocking things over. Uh, it's just been one of those days, uh, one of those mornings, I guess you'd say. But coffee helps. Bit of incense and. I don't have any notes, I just kind of channel what I know and I hope that my videos are helpful and insightful and um, you just get something out of them that you didn't know before and you know, let's just get into it. So, so far we are looking at the suit of swords and we have covered the three of swords, four of swords, five of swords, six of swords and we are working a little bit backwards. I'm kind of just called to look at the three today. Uh, and uh, we also look at the traditional meanings of the cards as well. So if you're new to the tarot and um, you'd like a bit of a refresher course, a bit of a walkthrough, a bit of a tarot 101 class, um, you have come to the right place. So yeah, please like and subscribe if you enjoy my work. And let's jump into the symbology. We start off with this card first and then we look at my artwork and yeah, cool. Okay, so I mean, this card in itself is very much connected to shadow. I mean, it is absolutely a shadow card. And um, the suit of swords are more heavier and um, they do get a bit more intense as we go through from the ace of swords through to the ten of swords. And we'll look at that a little bit later. Um, but for the most part, it is a card that is about inner reflection. So let's look at the artwork. We see a woman sitting here and um, she's wearing a white dress. She's sitting on a stone stool bench that is a square cut type of cube. Um, so the white dress means purity, innocence. It's a flowing energy there. Uh, in a lot of different depictions, this card is looked at from a androgynous point of view. So it's looked at from, from a man that could be sitting there and it doesn't matter. It's the same thing, guys, like it's... um. You know, it's a person, a being that is in a place of, I don't know what to do next. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Like, hey, we're all in these situations. We all end up, you know, in these, in these places. And, and so we're kind of weighing up, you know, what's right, what's wrong, up, down, left, right. I don't know. It's, ah, uh, fuck. But the truth is, you'll get through it. We all do. So, yeah, the white represents, it's actually a reference to the, uh, the high priestess energy as well. I mean, this card probably is vibrationally one of the closest cards to the subconscious or to, in, you know, connected to the intuition, it's connected to the mind. It's also very like visually very similar as well with this white flowing kind of like um, fraternity dress that we saw in the Empress card with the pomegranates on. But this one's more of a neutral kind of tone. Gray is neither black nor white. And uh, we also see a... Um, her, she's got her shoes on. In some depictions in, in the card, we see the shoes are, are dirty or unclean. In this particular depiction, they are clean. So we see that she has, there's been no struggle here. She's kind of put herself in this position and it is of her own doing. Um, we also see that there are two swords across her chest as well that she's got pointed out in either direction. And this is a reference to, you know, not letting things in, not letting things out, protection of the heart. We know that in the suit of swords, there is uh, an energy that is, you know, don't come too close. You know, you get cut. Swords can cut. Swords protect. Swords can be battle energy as well. But in the tarot, it is mostly connected to logical thinking and um, matters of the neck up. We also see that she's blindfolded here and it's like there's no sign of struggle yet again. So it's like she's put this blindfold on around her own eyes and uh, she's kind of turned her attention inwardly to look at the forces and situations that are happening within her. And um, 
We also see a crescent moon here as well. So it's a depiction or a connection to what is um, hidden that is unseen. We also see this reference in the High Priestess card and the cloud, the sky is kind of transitioning from day to night. So we've got that energy coming into night, you know, things come out in the night. We have to rely on our other senses as well. Like we can't see everything in the night. It's also connected to the moon with the water. The moon has cycles. And it's kind of like, for me, we'll, we'll look at the, simil the symbology here and then we'll look at what, um, you know, my point of view or where I'm looking at it. And, and that's where it kind of gets a little bit more, you know, juicier. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, it could be, you know, it really is like looking into yourself. And I think blindfolding, blindfolds can be a thing that, you know, are there for a reason that we um, need to block out all distractions. I do this a lot myself. I, I won't lie. Like a lot of the times I do a lot of my work, my best work when I'm, you know, just, um, you know, in a reflective state and I'm not very, I'm more passive. I'm more kind of connected to nature. This card is very much like that as well. She is outdoors. She is out in, you know, go to the ocean, you know, ground yourself. Um, do that in a kind of, um, you know, it's, well, this energy is like really weighing up pros and cons. And, um, you know, we can't be protective, I guess, without being a little bit deflective in some ways. And this could be a little bit cold. It could be that someone might have hurt you and it's a past uh, relationship that really ended badly. And now you might be weighing up to let another person back into your life and you don't really know. And it's kind of like you're dating and it's heading that way. And, um, you know, you're kind of letting your walls down and, you know, it's like, um, you know, like you put your guard down, you don't want to get hit in the, you know, hit in the head again. And I think that's part of what this is. It is a developing situation where we see with the crescent moon energy, it's not fully, it hasn't been fully made. So, um, eventually it will be a decision that you'll have to make and it will be a decision that you will have to deal with. And this card is fundamentally about decision making. Um, so, I mean, for me, it, with shadow work, I mean, we looked at that before. We've talked about this in the channel is that if there isn't a level of shadow work going on, then there is no spirituality at all. Full stop, end story. We must look at what is unseen. In fact, divination is divining. It's trying to see what is unseen. And that's what the tarot is. It's a tool. But we already know that we're an extension of source itself. And we know that, you know, we can look for things in, you know, like tools. But the real power, the real energy of the the truth of the situation is really always within us. And deep down, we know whether it's using the tarot or not. So it's like, this could be like the tarot card, like consort or, you know, go see a psychic, a card reader, a medium, shaman, whatever it is that you need, go get that clarity. Um, but then go back and sit by yourself and really look into yourself and really come to the decision that you need to make here is that it is your decision to make whatever it is. So just weigh up all the, you know, the pros and the cons and really think, you know, you're going to have to cross some deep level of area of water in the subconscious mind to get to the other side of, of what this is and, um, and knowing what you need to do, what you must do next. So for me, we see two grounds, uh, mounds of dirt here, and this could be like weighing up the clutter as well, like the crap that we have accumulated in our mind, like clearing our mind, um, where she's removed all the visual obstacles so things just can't get in her way and she can, you know, really look inside herself. Um, there's a reference that I'm getting channeling now, actually, which goes to the Kill Bill movie when you see Kill Bill Part 2 and the bride gets buried. She is buried alive with a flashlight and it's a reference to like being trapped in darkness, but also knowing that if she could surrender to that darkness, she could really look within herself and find the strength to get out of this situation. And that's what she does when she's in the coffin. You know, she she does the you know exploding heart technique and pushes her way through all the dirt to come out and emerge with you know the strength that she needed. But she had to go within herself to find that strength. And I'm not saying that all the answers are inside of ourselves. That's not true. We're all extensions of source. But what I am saying is that um, we need to really listen to how we feel about things, not other people's opinions and the media and what other people are kind of projecting their viewpoint on us. Because no one can really report anything without some kind of level of, um, you know, bias to it. And so it's like not worrying about what other people think. It's worrying about what you think. What do you feel? What do you believe in your heart? What works for you? 
Um, we also see the stone still represents matter. Um, so it is a situation that is forming that is, you know, solid and it is still. So this is about keeping your mouth shut and it could be like shadow work for me is every couple of weeks or so I will... And I don't recommend this for everybody because this could be a bit dark, but I mean, I've wandered off into the forest at night and I've really kind of looked into myself and really thought, what is going on here? In fact, the Elgoliath Tarot deck, this whole deck, my deck that I created, um, I made it, you know, I started this idea for this concept in a forest. And if you get my guidebook, you'll actually see, um, actually, I'll just grab it now and let you guys know that uh, when it comes to shadow work, uh, in the book, I actually talk about an experience that happened to me at the start of the book. Um, it is just actually just here. And I haven't read it actually because it's very personal, but it is here in the prelude. Um, and it's the story of my integration of shadow where I went into the forest to kind of find myself and, you know, really look at you know, really understanding what I need to do next. So, I mean, it's just a little bit of a personal story that I included, but I guess we all have to do that to some capacity. We have to go within and really look and go, okay, this is how I feel. Um, so, I mean, this could be taken in so many ways, depending on what cards you get around it. It could be that you're in the middle of an argument. It could be that you're really torn between two lovers. It could be that you're torn between a decision of letting something come into your life and letting something go. And I think it's all kind of, you know, life is very subjective. You know, what someone else throws away, someone else could really use. I mean, there's no right or wrong. And especially when it comes to your path and, and spirituality. Um, it's said that Shakespeare, I mean, it's a favorite quote that Shakespeare says where he says um, uh, that tragedy is a comedy that is just misunderstood. And I think there's kind of a bit of truth in that as well, where it is, you know, it is, it really does depend on how you look at things and, and how we choose to interpret things. Um, and also with pain as well, there is an element of pain here as well, because, um, you know, she's holding the two swords up, but also at the same time, she can't hold them forever. She can't. And there is an element of time that's ticking away here because we know that with the moon cycles, it affects the tide and the tide will eventually start to rise and rise and get higher. And this is a decision that will eventually run out of time. You need to make the decision because, and also her hands are going to get very heavy holding. Her arms are going to get heavy holding up these swords. And she's either going to have to put one down or put them both down. And so, and also the sword length is both equal uh, that we see here as well. So it is an equal problem. And that's why you're kind of in the middle. It's uh, This energy is for me is connected to Libra and would be uh, associated with uh, a strong moon in Libra. If this is something that's connected to your chart, you could have a look and see how much Libra you've got in your chart, which is kind of that melting pot, the cooking pot. It's like not too much, not too little, uh, weighing things up, you know, really kind of waxing and waning. I mean, the two moons, you know, the cycles here, it's like a reference to, I'm getting in my head, um, Sophie's Choice, that film where you have to make a really big decision is that one has to be let go so the other can survive. And it's like, oh, it's it's a really tricky one. And that would definitely be an energy that would be connected to this card. It's analytical and it's also trusting your mind. And we see that in the sword energy, it's all happening up in the head, in the thoughts, in the brain. It's not happening in the heart. It's all gone up into the head. So it would indicate that it's really time for you to just really just fucking ground, 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 ground. If you need to ground, do it. Don't let other people rush you. Um, this could be a, in a business reading. This could be like a contract that you've um, gone into that you could be, you know, you need time to read it. Don't let people rush you into stuff. The time hasn't run out yet. There is a time or a limit of time here as well. But I mean, contracts for the most part are really written in a way that are hard to understand for a reason. It's because they're there to confuse you. So there is a level of contract energy. If this pulled up with a devil card, we could see that someone could be trying to, you know, withhold information from you. So you haven't got all your facts straight. You haven't got all the information that you need just at this point right now. So, and they're like, sign it, sign it. I give you like 30 days to sign it, or not 30, like two days to sign it. Like just, you know, don't sign anything. In life, I think it's said that we do, there's action and there's inaction, but also taking no action is also, 
um, action. <laughs> like, you know, doing nothing can actually create a consequence as well. And then you're, you're faced with the, diff the difficulty of that decision that you should have made. Also, it could be sometimes in life we don't have time. We have to make a decision really quickly. We don't have a lot of time to think about this. We've got to think on our feet and it's like really quick energy as well. Um, and for the most part, when we look at the sword energy in the suit, they do get heavier. I mean, right up to the Ten of Swords. I mean, that's a pretty dark card there. We see the crows and in my artwork that I depicted. We looked at the moving away from something in the Six of Swords. We saw the inner work, the rest and the transmutation that happened in the Four of Swords when we came out of the Three of Swords which was the heartbreak and then trying to you know, rest and find a, an energy that we could work with to um, transmute that pain and make something out of it. And then the Eight of Swords, we felt trapped again. So it, it's interesting um, that the Ace of Swords is the first Swords card and it really is about that rejuvenation, that beautiful explosion of energy. You've had a really, really, really great idea and it's amazing and you've got all this excitement and it's yes, yes, do it, start, go. And then all of a sudden, bang, you hit the two of swords. We've got this cross of energy that they've both hit and it's like you're hitting doubt, you're hitting uncertainty, you're hitting confusion and you've come up against your first road bump and it's like, oh fuck, is this really for me? I don't know what I'm doing and you know, and I think the truth of it really is, I mean, if it doesn't feel right, then it probably isn't right. And that is intuition. That's the high priestess energy there. So don't do it. In some cases, do nothing. In a lot of cases, right now isn't the time. Gather yourself, get your facts straight and get a clear mind. Uh, a, a little technique that I've learned for myself that I'll share with you as well is that sometimes when I feel really overwhelmed and I feel really a bit... Um, uh, kind of like weighing down, I don't know what to do, I actually reset myself by shifting myself on a physical level by getting into the shower and I turn the temperature down so it's colder, like a cold, not a, like not a freezing shower, but a colder shower and I'll stand under the cold water. The cold water just for me kind of resets my mind. I, I don't know whether that's scientific, but I've found that to work in a lot of cases when I was a kid, I used to do that. Um, it just kind of regrounds me and kind of brings me back to that neutral state of homeostasis where I'm, I can reheat myself again if I need to. But it, I, it, it's just a technique that I've learned as well. Otherwise, you could use sage or crystals, whatever it is that you choose to use. But yeah, for the most part, you come up against the first challenge. And now it's like, what am I going to do? The best answer is do nothing or wait till you get your facts straight. Um, also as well, with um, the universe being a... We'll move away from this card, I think, because we've there's, it's pretty straightforward. I think uh, when when we look at the um, when I look at the time space energy of this reality as well, I also feel that the exposure of difficulties that we're faced with is exponentially connected to our own expansion. <laughs> I don't know. Like, oh, uh, you're probably thinking, what did he just say? What I'm what I'm saying. I'll give you an example. Um, Say, for example, you're a kid and you're in kindergarten and you're just learning like one plus one equals two. Um, the chances are that you're not going to be exposed to like really complicated mathematical equations um, like ratios or algebra or anything that's really complex because you're still mastering the basics. You're still back it. So what I'm saying is if it's like as we evolve and expand in our self and the vibrational match to situations will also get more difficulty depending on your expansion. So, <laughs> and I've noticed that like when I was a kid, I was like, oh, these are the hard years, you know, fuck, just hang on and I'll get through it. No way. Like when you get older, life gets more complicated, you know, because you're a grow, you can't stay and just do one plus one equals two. That's not going to expand you. It's not going to make you grow. It's not going to push you and challenge you. And we challenges and it's like a rites of passage. Like this card could be connected to spiritual uh, initiations, you know, challenges that we have to go through to rise above, to get that expansion and the level of difficulty that they get, uh, the confusion in those situations will increase because that's part of the, the human, you know, or the soul's journey. And rather than resisting it, surrender to it. Often it's said, and I like this quote as well, is that our resistance to our pain is actually our cause of it. Resisting pain is the cause of it. And I actually find that to be quite true. I mean, 
I can take pain myself. I've gone through a lot of pain. Um, there is no physical test for pain. It's like, you know, that one to 10 scale, someone else's version of a 10 could be your version of a two. So we don't, it depends. So it's really kind of tailored to that whole scale. Um, but yeah, like the, the version, I get a little bit lost, but yeah, the version of pain, the amount of pain that we take also is the amount of pressure that we're prepared to put on ourselves. And I think back to this energy in the Two of Swords, it's like the situations that we get ourselves in is because of the choices that we made based on our belief system, which we went and looked at the Hierophant card. So if you want to change the result, you have to go back to the belief because the belief influenced the behavior. The behavior had a physical consequence. And then that, yeah. <laughs> uh, I hope that makes sense. But yeah, so um, this card in itself being shadow and you know being a shadow deck, it is, I don't know what I don't know. You know, that is the definition of shadow work. Like, yes, that is like, we don't know everything. And the more that we know, the less that we know as well. <laughs> like we don't, like life is like that. And it's all about learning and expansion because we are a part of the universe as well. And the universe is expanding itself and learning about itself through us and our own expansion because we're a part of it. And it said that if God existed, we are God. We're a part of him, you know, a part of it or a part of the universe. We are star seeds. We're all beautiful star seeds. And yes, all things are born in dark, in darkness. And I think that we, you know, but it's a choice to come out of that darkness into the light. It is a choice. Some people are more, you know, I'm not going to lie. I, I gravitate more towards the shadow side. I do gravitate more towards the left-hand side path. I find it more realistic. Um, and on another note, I'll say in this video, I do see a lot of um, content, not that I, I don't watch, I stay in my own lane, I mostly focus on my own journey, but for the most part, when I look at a lot of tarot videos, they're not talking about like the depths of the card meaning, like the, the people aren't looking at the actual archetype of it and really getting into it and what does that mean for you and, and why don't you connect to this artwork or why do you connect to this art? That's what I'm looking for. I want to I wanna hear more of the heart. I want to feel like what they're talking about rather than just like... Um, like the commercialism of something, like the physical, the physical object of something. I'd rather, I want to hear about your story. So if you're out there and, you know, share your story a bit more, like let me get a bit more depth, no fluff, like not the consumerism element of it, of, you know, throwing this away or buying this and acquiring this. Let's talk about your understanding of it. That's where I like to, I like to go there and look at that. So yeah. Um, but yeah, so this this pill can be uh, blah, 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 tongue tired. <laughs> this uh, card can be a tough one to swallow, um, you know, tough pill to swallow. And it is it is really about you know don't um, you know if you've started an idea that came out of the first you know the, the Ace of Swords, don't give up, keep going, you know. And there is no fast forward remote to success, guys. You know things take time and. Um, you know, grow your business, grow, you keep doing the work, focus on your work, focus on, you know, like I think when you start a business as well, and I always see swords around business energy, just like pinnacle energy, pinnacle energy for me in the tarot is the reward of the work that you did. This is the decision making that you made in your work and standing by that decision. So for me as an artist, I look for like a very, if I was doing a commission work, not that I do anymore, but um, if I was doing like artwork for somebody, I would put in the brief, like what is the brief? What's the mission statement? What's the business plan? You know, let's stick to that. And I think go, so when you get a bit confused, go back to what was this book about? What was this artwork about? What was this? Go back to this, the mission statement. And for me as well, I don't often get really confused because I really know myself, you know, I've, I've gone through a lot. I know what I'm capable of as an artist. I know myself as a reader. I know what I'm capable as as a medium. And um, whenever I'm down and if you're out there listening, I've, you know, I suffer from depression. I suffer from a lot of, you know, a lot of problems in my life. And whenever I'm down, my purpose is what saves me. I found my purpose and my purpose is art. It's creating art. You know, when I'm suicidal, who saved me? Art. When I'm down, who saved me? Art. When I'm sick, art. Confused, art. It's always coming back to my purpose. So you must find your passion and you must find your purpose because finding your purpose fixes everything because you're in what you're here to do. You found why you're here and now you're moving forth in your inner self 
and you're enjoying what you do because it brings you joy. You've got to follow your joy. And so if you're following your joy, I mean, you shouldn't be getting hard, hard confusion about stuff because you already know you already know yourself. You know your own strengths. Um, in the Golden Dawn, the three, Two of Swords was actually called the, I think it was called the, um, the, what was it? The, oh my God, I'm going blank. <laughs> it was called the Law of Inner Balance. That's right. And I really, I agree with that. It is, it is an inner balance that's going on. And also nature has its own construct of balance as well. You know, this is connected to the justice energy as well, which is one energy will be created um, to destroy. And at the same time, another energy will be created to heal and fix or, you know, repair. Um, uh, yeah, let's have a look at the artwork. I think we'll kind of jump into, I think, more of this, you know, art, why I did it. But for most part, if you're getting this card in a, in a nutshell, it is about consequences and choices. So you've, you've shut the world out. You know, that's for me when I'm, I need to go into myself, work out what I want to do and move forward. And, you know, write down your ideas, journal, write things down. I, I write, I'm always on my phone, on my notepad, like writing like thoughts that come into my head. And, and then later I'll come back and like revisit that thought or look at why I was thinking that way and then open that up and, and you know, hitting roadblocks and working ways around it. You know, it's problem solving. But if you feel, you know, this is feeling stuck. So it's, um, you're bit getting a bit bogged down with the, you know, indecision of something and just go back to the mission statement. That's the best advice that I can give you. Um, so get informed, stand still, um, you know, pause, stop, don't do anything. Don't let anxiety overtake you. Don't let people pressure you into making this decision, but the, it is going to have to be made. Also, this card in shadow as well is a big one, is that people turn away from their shadow. They don't want to look at the truth of a situation. They're in a relationship and they're doing nothing and they're not happy and they're not saying anything to the other person. And that's not a good thing because those things build up and it comes back in a monster and it eats the relationship. So for the artwork, I let's jump into that. So, I mean, I went with a seal for this artwork because a seal to me is a social creature. They're more fun uh, animal. This is a seal that swam out at night into the darkness and they are still under that very thin crescent moon. And I think that's a reference to being blind. Most people had a very adverse reaction to the artwork here. It is quite gruesome. You've got the eye sockets removed from the seal. And the reason that I did that, it's like the eyeballs are missing because it's like being replaced with two candles pointing outwards at a lit is metaphorically like lighting your own way and not seeing or relying on sight. It's more relying, relying on other faculties that are inside of the clairs. It's also a reference to the eyes are absolutely useless if the mind is blind. So dealing with someone that's really arrogant or ignorant to the truth of a situation, they're blind. They're, they're not going to be able to move. And what happens to things that don't move? They break. What happens to things that aren't flexible? They break. So it's, being, it's not hanging on too tight to the ideology of something, but also really um, stop resisting the truth and stop denying and deflecting your own truth and um, looking at things properly. Stop putting things off. Stop pretending. And it's like getting to the heart of the matter. This is what's causing this pain and I need to go back and release it. We need to work through it. I need to include other people in, you know, in things that I need to do to get that clarity that I need, gain the information, the insight to move forward. Um, so yeah, that is a reference to the artwork there. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so uh, yeah, and I think that's the thing, like it is a choice. It's a choice. She swam out here for a choice. And at some point she, her, her energy, you know, the animal will go back to its natural state. But for now, it's like, if you've got this energy, you've removed yourself away from other people because you just have this decision that you need to make and look at all the different angles so you can get that really, um, built up energy that will allow you to move forward and see things as they are. And also don't be defensive. Don't block things out if you're unwilling to make a choice, you know, and also isolating yourself as well. Like, um, you know, isolating ourselves isn't always the best course of action. Sometimes we have to deal with things. So don't stay out there too long making your decision because time is of the essence. Also, this card uh, before I go is also for me very much connected to my relationship with time and time management. So being really efficient with my time and not waste time and really focus like dedicating this is how much time I'm going to spend on this this is how much I'm going to do on this and then and really coming back to that so that's a logical choice that I'm making
working in the decision of the mental. It's the mental. And I hope that makes sense. I, I really hope that we've covered this from a lot of different angles. Um, I'm not sure which card I'm going to do next. If you'd like to um, pick up a copy of my deck, you can. Um, uh, you can pick up a copy from the link below. It is all self-published. It is all hand-drawn. And... Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video today. Uh, links will be included down the bottom of the um, video. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. And wishing you all a fabulous week. And I'll take care. And you guys take care. Bye, guys. Bye.